Hi moms, I'm thrilled to talk to you today because number one, I have props for this video and number two, I already have a title. This one's gonna be called Walk a Mile in My Shoes. I need to give you a little backstory so that you'll understand the shoe analogy and then we'll get into why I'm telling you that. A little spoiler alert, it's speaking to those parents who say, I have tried every diet and I don't see any evidence of healing. So I'm not sure why trying this now would work. So my first prop is my sneaker. I know it's yucky and grungy and whatever. I do have a newer pair, but I just like these the best. So it works for my video. These sneakers, no matter when I wear them and for how long I wear them and where I wear them, I feel great. They support me. I have no pain later. I have no blisters. My back feels awesome. Love them. That's these, okay? Then I have a pair of shoes. They're a little, these are also a little dirty, but they were perfect for this video. I have a newer, cleaner pair, but the heel is too tall. So we're gonna use this one. I just don't want you to think that I only wear grungy shoes. And I like to wear these with a pair of jeans. We're gonna run out to dinner or something like that. I just wanna look fun and I don't wanna be just like, ugh, wearing this. Now, these cause me absolutely no problem. I can wear them for a really long time and all is well, great. Then there's these, hello, super fun. Um, definitely a higher heel, like <laughs> hardly any support, but super sexy. And I really like to wear these shoes. I will definitely feel this in my back the next day. I kind of wobble out of the car just to walk into the restaurant, but you know what? I don't care because I want to look good. So those are the three shoes. Now, here's why I tell you this. When my husband and I will go away for a weekend and we go into Manhattan, we live in Jersey, so it's not that far. And we just have the older kids, watch the younger kids. It's a wonderful little weekend away. Maybe we catch a show at least when they used to still have shows before this pandemic, but maybe we would catch a show, we'd go to dinner. Most of what we do is literally, we kind of walk from coffee shop to coffee shop, you know, a little diner to a little place to eat lunch. To, we're just basically walking, eating, drinking coffee, and we love a good Barnes and Noble, we'll do that. And then later in the day, we will go back to the hotel and then get ready and go maybe have dinner and then hit a show. And so that's when, that weekend, my husband will tell me, he'll always remind me, please do not wear shoes that are gonna hurt because he knows that I will be complaining. And I would say to him, I'm fine, it's fine, I'm gonna be fine. And invariably, I decide to wear these during the day on like the Saturday because these feel fine. But these really don't feel fine after several hours. Now, when it's later in the day and we're gonna go out to dinner, I may already be asking, are we taking an Uber? And he knows it's because my feet are already hurting. And he's like, no, and I told you not to wear those. He's so mean to me. But he's like, well then don't wear these, wear the other ones or something. And I'm like, ew, of course I'm wearing these, this is the outfit. So I'll wear them and literally just like walking out of the hotel room to get onto the elevator, I'm hobbling. By the next day, I can't even wear these. I can't even wear these. And I then am wearing these for at least a week. No joke, because my back will wanna like go out because I just was wearing heels for too long. Fine, you got my shoe analogy, right? Okay, so now let me talk to you about your kids and how I want to explain what's going on with them. So your children have very compromised systems. Your children are kind of like how I would be after a day already walking in these shoes. So you give me this for half a second and I am showing the pain. When parents typically call me and have me coach them, one of the first things they will tell me is that, well, their child has even been tested, they don't have gluten sensitivities or dairy sensitivities or they don't really have problems with sugars and things like that, but they often have a bunch of acronyms after their names or they have a lot of behaviors. And I say to them, okay, okay, so what does your child eat? And they will describe to me a lot of this, a lot of this, some of this. This would be your fruits, vegetables, real food, no triggers, okay? And then there's some of this. There's a good amount of this. But because there's hardly any of this, they think they're doing it right and that there should be healing. And therefore, since there is not healing, food is not a factor. So what I try to tell them and try to explain to them, they have a child with a very compromised system right now. So this is actually to their child, like this is to us. So we can't have this right now. We need just this and a pair of crutches. Crutches would be like the supplements. Just this until you start to see healing. And then when you start to see healing, you stay here. The second question I get is, well, I've definitely tried a lot of this. 
you know, with not that much of this, but when am I gonna see the healing? They've got ticks or twitches, stuttering, bedwetting, angry, angry tantrums, and things of that nature. And what I find time and time and time again is that you are not going to see the big behaviors. Typically what drives somebody to call me is not what's gonna fall away first. What falls away first is these nuances of healing. For instance, a child will all of a sudden be less likely to be as edgy. A child will be less likely to fall apart. A child will be now more likely to maybe ask you how you're doing. They slowly come out of themselves because they are in such, we don't realize, they are in absolute survival mode. When your child is being pummeled by inflammation and a brain on fire, they're doing everything they can just to have their day be okay. They really don't have the wherewithal to say, oh mom, how's your day going? Or when they fall apart, be like, I'm really sorry that that happened. And some kids actually will, at some point in the day, come back to mom totally crying and feeling remorseful. But they'll then do it again the next day, or they'll do it later that night and they'll fall apart again, or they'll fall apart in the morning, whatever it is, as that those toxins cycle back out of them, they're gonna show their behaviors. So what we're trying to do is just use this. Why? Because when we just do this, the body now has freed itself up. It has a lot of energy because it's not wasting its time trying to digest this kind of food, and it's just digesting very simple food. So now it's got all this energy. So what can it do with the extra energy? It can go right into the cells, and it can start eliminating the substances that that cell carries that its body sees as being toxic. Listen, it could be heavy metals. It could be the chlorine from pools. It could be medicines your child has taken. It could be yeast. It could be bad bacteria. There's so many things that cause inflammation. What we want is to have a really clean, lean working machine so that your body has the strength to be able to bring itself back into balance. Then we can add supplements, right? We, we help with those deficiencies. Then, then, once we're walking like this, we're doing this, we're also added in parenting. A lot of people think, oh, the diet and the parenting, 50-50. Mm -mm. Dieting, the diet, 100%. Parenting, 100%. Mom's view of the entire situation and her mindset and walking in a place where she says, it's gonna be okay, we're gonna heal this, we're gonna work with whatever we see today, I'm gonna see your greatness, I'm gonna tell you your greatness, I am gonna honor you, I'm gonna show you who your identity is so that you can walk into that identity. That mindset, that's another 100%. And then the last piece is the environment of the home that is driven by the primary relationship. So mom and dad, their marriage, there's the climate in the home, right? This doesn't mean that, oh, a single mom can't heal their child. Of course she can. But I'm just saying, if you have a primary relationship in that home, that is a trickle down approach. So you can't have chaos up here with mom and dad and expect that your child is going to heal. It is all of the components, but in all of the components, it's here, right? It's what is supporting you, what will really help you, what will be easiest in the home and on the child. So this might be a crazy, tumultuous mom and dad. You know, this might be if mom acts like this every day because she's too tired to act like this. Mom's gonna have to rein it in. Mom's gonna have to realize it's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. My child was created for a plan and a purpose and we're gonna slowly walk this out. I promise that was like no pun intended. But there's a lot of things that come together. And, and typically the last thing that falls away is the bedwetting and the stuttering and the, the ticks and the twitches and all of those ma more major behaviors that you will see. What falls away first are the nuances. Hey mom, how are you doing today? Like the thing where you're just like, oh. Or the thing that usually happens, a mom will tell me this, is I noticed at the end of the day, hmm, they weren't such a, I won't use like a mean word, but they weren't such a jerk, right? They weren't such a jerk. Or they were less of a jerk today. And I know that sounds so funny, but if you live in a family where your ADHD child is really mean or bossy or all over the place or not connecting with you and just, Oh, just so frustrating to be around. When you live with that all day and you can take the moment to go, oh, they're less like that today because you've been doing this for two weeks straight. I am telling you, I see it time and time again. So moms, I have been there. I have walked in all the shoes. I wouldn't waste my time telling you all this. 
If I didn't see healing happen all the time, slow and steady wins the race. Oh my God, it's like more shoe analogies after the other. You can do this, moms. Love you.